In this video, I want to break down my entire self-improvement journey because I'm at a place right now where I feel like things are starting to like click and I think that all the hard work of being obsessed with self-improvement are starting to actually like come to fruition and I'm actually seeing like major, major benefits of basically the work that I've been doing over the last five or six years. Um, and so if you're watching this, you're most likely interested in self-improvement. Maybe you're in high school, maybe you're in college, maybe you're trying to get into it. You're, maybe you're just trying to figure everything out. And right now I'm trying to figure everything out too. But what I have done is I've been through some stuff and I've done things that I think will be super valuable to you. And so in this video, I'm going to just basically storytell. I'm going to tell you about my teenage years. I'm going to tell you about how I've changed. I'm going to be super transparent on a lot of things. And the goal here is to understand that you can completely change your life, completely, like night and day. And that we are a malleable person, like we're super malleable, our brain is malleable, you rewire everything, all your thought processes. And so I'm going to just break down this video, be super transparent about where I started, what caused me to get into self-improvement, what caused me to basically go down this path that I'm so passionate about and I think a lot of you will uh, will relate to this. So uh, to start off, I think, you know, as I grew up, I was always like, I was by no means like the pop, like it wasn't cool, like it wasn't the most popular kid. I had I had like a good amount of friends, um, but like I'd always be like kind of picked on for like stupid things. And very early on, I, I realized just do one, like just like, like whatever, just, just brush it off basically. And also to just like, deflect things as they come at you um so you know in, like instead of getting really offended by something for example if someone like made fun of me for having braces or some shit i'd be like i'd like make a joke out of it it kind of be self-deprecative and some people might think that's toxic but that's been that was a way for me to like just be like whatever like i'll laugh at myself i don't take myself too seriously and to this day i don't take myself too, too seriously like i am a hardo i say things that can be crazy and i'm like self-aware and it's good to be you know somewhat um, open to that kind of stuff. And so anyway, I was always able to brush things off, you know, and one of the big things that really hit me like hard early on was, uh, an instance I had like, I had quote unquote, quote unquote girlfriends, right? This is like middle school, high school, stupid. Like st I cringe thinking about these, this period of my life, but obviously we've all gone through, you know, those early weird, awkward stages. Um, and, and, and so I was like, people would like girls would say like, I'm awkward and stuff. Like this was like a legit thing or girl or one specific girl that like, it was like, it was like a huge thing for me. I was like, Oh, why she's calling me awkward? Like, what does that even mean? And obviously like everyone at that age is awkward. But for me, I was like, that was like, okay, that's weird. Um, and then continuing on with, with life and going into high school, you know, it was, there was always this like, okay, how can I like position myself as a more confident person? How can I improve? internally in my head, like how can I communicate with people? And so I realized like you can actually change these things, like pretty much everything, not everything, but a lot of things are in our control. And a lot of people like to blame their genetics or their family or like how they're raised and like, oh my, all these, all these excuses, right? But what I really was open to was this idea that we can actually improve ourselves. And so that really changed everything for me because one of the first things I was crit criticized was my size, right? So I'd be, I remember uh, I, I used to play ice hockey. I didn't really play in high school. I wasn't good enough. But I went to this ice hockey, like, training camp to prepare for freshman hockey. And, like, I was the weakest kid there. I couldn't do a pull-up. I could only bench the bar because there was, like, these um, lifting, like, tests you had to do in this training camp. And one was um, you could bench 95 as many times as you want or 135 as many times as you want. And I can, I did, bro, I, I remember this so vividly. I had my buddy spot me, right? So it was like one of my friends who was my age, spot me on 95. I went like this. I like bent my elbow slightly and locked out. And I was like, yo, I did one. Like it was like one of those things. Like obviously like at this point we make fun of kids like that. But um, it was just a funny thing. Like I wrote down that I did one on that. Zero pull-ups or maybe I jumped and I don't really remember the pull-ups. It was like plank length. So stupid stuff, right? But the But what I found quickly was like, I was not the most talented here. Like there was kids my age that were just already through puberty, bedroom 135, absolute beast, right? And so I was like, man, that's that's kind of annoying. Like, what what uh how how can some people do this and not me? 
you know, I was just like, what the hell? So that quickly got me into fitness, right? And so fitness, I think, is the gateway to self-improvement. Because, and the reason why is because you can see such physical transformation and, and mind transformation as well. But for example, if you go to gym, if you're a newbie and you have not lifted a weight and you get on a semi-decent program and you semi-eat well, you're going to look different in a month. Like, I truly believe that. Like, right? Because you're, you're based on zero. Like, you haven't really trained. So I was going through fitness YouTube, right? Found David Lay's transformation, found like... Um, Elliot Hulse, which was a huge one back in the day, um, uh, Yo Elliot series, and like, I just, I got sucked in. How do I gain weight? How do I build confidence? How do I do this? Blah, 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 right? All this research. And I fell in love with that. Like, I fell in love with, okay, like learning things. And I remember, um, this was a transition, right? So I got, so I got a taste of that. I started to consume fitness content stuff. There's another part of my life, right? Was that I was like a big follower, like freshman, sophomore of high school. I was a big follower. I stuck to groups. I did what I did to st like stick, like fit in with the status quo. And that meant like drinking or being peer pressured and like doing stupid shit. And uh, <laughs> and so there's like one, there's a few series, like few times where like I just like like I probably had like three beers, but it was like absolutely destroyed. But like going, like being with a group of fr like friends and like all they wanted to do is like drink and smoke and everything. And I was just like, I knew like it wasn't me. Like it's not how like, that's not how I was raised. I knew I wasn't really truly interested in, in it, but it was like the only way to be like social and like fit into this crowd and all that stuff. And um, yeah, so there's a few like bad nights I had, right? And I was like, what the hell am I doing? Like what, what am I doing here? It's like, this is not helping me at all. Like, I'm not happy. Like, I'm not happy at all doing this. I, it destroys my next day if I'm hungover or whatever. I look like a fucking moron, right? And like this, the, 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 like I always look at things like a net positive or a net negative, right? And like that was just a net negative, right? All things considered, was this actually benefiting? Was the social time, the relationships, the friendliness, which comes with social stuff like that, was that actually worth it, right? And to me, I was like, no, it's not worth it at all. I didn't even, like, there's only a few, few times, right? And so immediately I, I shut that off. Like, it was like, I'm done with this. <laughs> I was like, I was so rattled. I was so, like, emotional about it. I was like, I was, I'm done with this. And so, you know, I, people, and then it, it became a joke. Some of my high school buddies later, like, junior, senior year, my, like, best friends of all time, they'd be like, oh, Pat hates fun. Because it became a thing, like, Pat doesn't. He rarely goes out to a party. He's rarely drinking. Like, actually, not at all. At the point, I was not drinking at all or doing anything. Like, Pat hates fun, right? Because fun was defined as, you know, partying, drinking, all that stuff. Um, but, yeah, man, I, I, that's probably where at, like, 14, 15 years old, I had tons of acne. Like, the worst acne ever. So, I had acne. I also had braces. And I was also skinny as hell, Okay. And so on top of this, as well as being in high school, as well as like wanting to go out and date girls or see girls, um, it was just like not, it was not ideal. And like, it was interesting because like, like I, like I kind of talked about this before, like you're always going to feel like, like it's not like once I gain muscle, once I take off my braces, once I clear my face that I'll be happy. Right. And that's why I, I posted content today. It's like, fuck happiness, right? Because we think that like once we achieve something, we'll be happy. It's like, once I get there, I'll be happy. It's like, no, like a lot of it, you can't actually be like happy, but like content and like solid, solid mental health as you are right now, which is super interesting. Um, so yeah, so I like, I fixed it. I was like really fixated on that. I want to change that. So, you know, braces, I can't really do much about that. I had braces like through my junior year of high school. Like it was brutal. Uh, acne, I immediately like was like, okay, how can we figure this out? So I was like, get on products, like going to the dermatologist, all that stuff. Lifting, okay, this is what I have to do. I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna go consistently, hop on these fitness guys' plans and I'll, I'll get after it. And so quickly, like that little bit of momentum really like spiraled into, okay, you know, I'm seeing changes in my physique as a young kid lifting weights, right? Um, I was super skinny, but I like, I was seeing progress, right? And so that I think really translated into every area of my life. So as one does when they start going down the YouTube rabbit hole, right? 
you start getting recommended other self-improvement topics like business and entrepreneurship and like content like that. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I became fixated with Gary Vee. Like Gary Vee was one of the first people that really resonated with me. And I wanted to start a business. And um, me and my one of my buddies like tried to start a like a social media company. It's funny because like that's now what I do. But I tried to start one like really early on, like in high school. Um, and a total failure. Like no, no way in hell I knew what I was doing. And um, it was just like I don't know. It was just an effort. But I always knew in the back of my head that like this is what I wanted to do. Um, and so yeah, I really became fixated on self improvement content. You know, going to the gym. It just became a non-negotiable, and uh, I was also blessed to be surrounded by a lot of high achievers in high school. That's one thing that I actually think was like incredibly beneficial, and one thing I, I quickly took on is that like I don't want to like if, if I see someone and they're better like they're more athletic or they're better off than me, like I think in today's society it's very easy to be like oh like I don't know, get turned off or something like like for example if you see like. If I'm scrolling, like if you're scrolling through Instagram, you see all these good physiques. It's like it's like toxic or something that you're seeing things. Of course, if like bodies are getting actually like, edited and like it's totally fake, that's kind of bullshit. But like if you're seeing like a guy with a good physique or like someone killing it or someone making a lot of money, like my I wasn't like jealous of them. I was like, okay, I should surround myself with this person because he knows what they're doing. Um, and so going to an all guys school, there were some great high achieving guys there. Um, and so, you know, I had role models that were just my peers. And I was always, like, so, like, interested in why does this guy, you know, why does he have, why does he get all A's and why does he have the best physique and, you know, how, why, how does he make that happen? And, again, I just became fixated on this. And some of these kids, like, it probably came natural. But to me, I didn't, it didn't feel like it, it came natural. Like, it was not naturally, like, that caliber of a person. So it was, like, you know, it was all those, like, cringy, like, searches on YouTube, how to get big arms, like all that stuff, right? We go through that stage. Um, and then, you know, I, I got to for sure. And uh, I got to see that, you know, there's a lot of areas where you can just improve. And you know what, at the end of the day, just like get after it, do what you want to do. And so, yeah, I started posting content. And <laughs> I posted content and I still post content, not for views, not for followers. I post content because I want to document my journey. Like I'm so happy that I filmed my cringy workouts in high school. And like a few years ago, it might even be considered cringy. I got so much flack for that. But I did it because I knew that this was a part of my self-improvement. I knew that looking back, I could show these clips and it would be night and day. Like who is this kid? And so that's why I encourage you. If you're in a, in a space right now and maybe you're insecure or you want to improve yourself, start documenting. And you don't need to post it on social, right? You don't need to post it online. But for yourself, bro, like put it, put it in a Google Drive folder, put it in your desktop folder, whatever, and just keep putting on videos and photos, okay, documenting my process. Like keep a journal, like I journal all the time and it's so funny, not to flash forward a bunch of years, but like I look at my journal entries from like six months ago, night and day difference. And so that's when self-improvement gets really addictive because you see progress, you get addicted to it. It's like, oh, okay, in six months, look how much I've progress I've made. Okay, we're gonna keep going here. And um, yeah, super inspired by a lot of the guys, content guys I was consuming. Um, Gary Vee, I've told the story before, but went to a Gary Vee speech when I was like 15, 16, 17, just because I was so obsessed, I think I was 16. And uh, yeah, I just became like really looped into this world. And it almost like, I just, like, like even today, the problems that like a lot of people talk about, like I just can't even like, that's not something I, I, I really like worry about. And um, I'll get to that in a second. I'll, I'll um, you know, talk more on that in a, in a minute. But um, yeah, man, I, I just became obsessed. And so, like I said, high school was like really the transformation period. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, and then my habits, man. Like you were like as a teen, you're taught that like some things are normal, right? Like that porn is normal and that like all this stuff is normal and like you can drinking is normal and like all these stuff. And I was like... Like, like, that's not, like, that's not, like, just because normal doesn't mean it's, like, ideal. And, um, yeah, I, I really became, like, overly interested in avoiding things like that and, like, becoming, like, super focused on my goal. And my goal was really just that fitness part. But that fitness part, like, pushed me to what now my goals are now, which are much bigger. And so, yeah, again, you know, I, I, 
I was kind of this conformist mindset, end of high school, wanted to get that good college um, uh, acceptance, want to play college sports, so quickly just like fell into that crowd, like wanted to do that. And then, yeah, I, I quickly realized that there's a lot of other things I wanted to do. And, you know, I left, I was playing college across here, and I left that because I, and it wasn't like, it wasn't because I didn't want to do the work. Like, that's one thing that, like, I didn't want to come off as. I mean, I don't really care what people think of me. Um, but at the time, I definitely did. I didn't want to come off as, um, like, someone quitting just because they, um, like, they don't want to do the hard work and they're just going to go and play video games in a dorm. Like, I was just like, I can be doing other stuff during this time. And I loved it. I loved the sport. I loved lacrosse. But there's there just something more that I want to do. And um, yeah, and that's when I really became obsessed with entrepreneurship. And I was actually obsessed with entrepreneurship through high school, but I was denied from like the top entrepreneurship school, which is Babson. It was like this college that's in my, it's in, it's in Massachusetts. It's very close to where I go now. And I got denied by there and I was, oh man, that hit me. And I was like, okay, so I can't go to the school, which is like the number one for entrepreneurship. I'll go to this other business school and you know, I'll, I'll have like a chip on my shoulder there. Um, and so, yeah, man, so like that, that was like my trip on my shoulder. Like, you know, I tried to fit myself into the, um, kind of the internship to employee track and immediately, man, I knew, I knew that like, there's some way that I can, I can figure this out and not do that. Um, and so, so yeah. And at this point, like I, um, I kind of skipped some steps, but you know, uh, I was able to clear up my skin through Accutane. I started getting shape. I started to actually like have genuine good relationships with girls in high school and then like I landed like the best girlfriend in the world and like everything started to change because I started to do those habits and that's not to say like I honestly and this is one thing that to say about uh, back in high school this was like senior year is that I was very blessed to start dating Abby when I did because I was not like I was not there like in terms of self-improvement there's a lot of things I struggled with I was not the best at the beginning, um, but like I, I had that growth mindset, like I knew I could be the better, and so that's what's really like been awesome through our relationship. Is like it didn't like I didn't like get in a relationship and lead to complacency, and I didn't like start slacking off or be a degenerate or whatever. Um, so yeah, I had that like really solid positive mindset and just you know just just want to keep improving. Um, and so yeah, to to go back to the the college thing. Um, I needed to find a way to pursue entrepreneurship. Like I needed to find a way. And because entrepreneurship like is so like embedded in self-improvement, like if you watch self-improvement videos, you're gonna see like those motivational entrepreneurship videos. And um, not to say like everyone should be an entrepreneur, that's not the case. And that's not to say that everyone in self-improvement has to be an entrepreneur, that's not the case. But like I, I really resonate with these type of people and that type of content. So I just knew I needed to make it happen. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think that now like, you know, I, I, th then I started a business and starting a business is a whole other, you know, track of self-improvement. It's this whole other thing. Like basically, especially when you're a solopreneur or like a freelancer, the success of your business is like parallel with your work ethic, your, your, your improvement yourself, your, your, your own integrity and everything. And, um, I noticed that very early on, there's a lot of inefficiencies and a lot of things that I need to learn. And so that's when I, that's when everything kind of went from fitness to like lifestyle and like personality and confidence, self, self-improvement. And then went from to business self-improvement, which was like, okay, what's, you know, how can I learn skills that will be applicable in my business? How can I sell better? How can I, um, provide better services? Like all those things that came with this third stage of business self-improvement. And, uh, yeah, I just, I, 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 <laughs> I think that if you get sucked into self-improvement, if you get sucked into, you know, reading, reading that was a huge thing I started to pick up, going to the gym, you you became, be, can become addicted real quick. And it's, it's once you get past that like threshold, right? So one thing that's interesting, right, is when you say, tell someone to go to the gym and they often like go for like a few days strong and then they fall off, they lose their consistency. It's like once you can see that like clear, like night and day difference, which can come with like just a few months of doing it, it becomes a non-negotiable. Um, and so things become like, I don't consider going to the gym for me, like discipline or hard for me to do anymore. That's just a non-negotiable. Um, reading is still something that's hard for me to do every single night or 
at least enough that I'm happy with. Um, you know, so there's, there's a lot of things that like still need to be ingrained in you and something that I'm always improving on. But I'm at this stage right now where I am like really happy with the work that I put in. Like my, I'm very grateful for the 15, 16 year old dude that decided to go lift weights and just be open-minded to not fitting into the crowd, not over consuming alcohol, not partying all the time because that those little stupid decisions made me the person I am today. And you know, I'm still, I'm still, I'm probably in the middle of self-improvement. Um, and that's why it's so amazing is that a year from now, I could be a totally different person. I could tell you how about how I got from this state right now to that state in a year from now. And so that's what I'm chasing. Right. And, um, Matthew McConaughey has a great bit on it. Um, basically like I don't look up, it's funny, I don't, this could be another video too, but I don't like to put a lot of celebrities on a pedestal, especially like actors and like Hollywood people. But Matthew McConaughey, especially after reading his book, um, I don't know, it's something, something hits different with him. Like there's some sort of humility that a lot of actors don't have. Um, and so with him, he was like, you know, um, I think someone was like, who's your hero? And it's like, my hero is me in, in a year, or me in five or 10 years, whatever. And um, that mentality, when you're like, oh my God, my hero is my potential. Like my hero, like your hero doesn't need to be Matthew McConaughey. It doesn't need to be, you know, this person. It just needs to be you in the future that has got, that has done something. And uh, I really, I really, really relate to that because the person I am today my 15, 60 year old self would be like, hell yeah, like that's, that's who I'm looking up to. And like almost everything that I've put in my mind, the business, the reading, the, the going all in on self-improvement, like I've created everything that has been, was been, was in my mind in high school, right? I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be somewhat involved in social media, especially in the fitness industry. I wanted to work on my own hours. I wanted to put out content still. I want to help others. And I'm doing that right now, not to the caliber that I want to, like I want to 100x my reach, I want to help 100x more people, I want to make 100x more money, I want, like, all, of course, like there's always more. But the fact that I'm on that track and actually doing it and doing it somewhat successfully is incredible to me. So that's why, like, me a year from now, that's the goal. And so, yeah, I really want to leave it off on, on that, that point. Um, you know, I want to be transparent and that there's a lot of people out there that are lost. They feel down. They think that there's no way out. Be open-minded. Know that there's things that you can, you can improve on. Know that you are capable. And one thing that I like to say is like, you know, it's very easy to like not believe in someone. You know, it's be, believing in someone is sometimes hard to do, especially like when you have no evidence in believing in them. Like one thing that like Andy Frisella talks about is like when an entrepreneur starts his business, they often complain, oh, all, all I have is haters, no one believes in me. And it's like, okay, but there's like no reason for them to believe in you. But I would actually say that I know everyone comes from a different background. I know everyone has their own story. Everyone has their own issues and difficulties they face. But we're all, we all share one thing and that's we're human. And think about all the things that humans have been able to accomplish. The skyscraper that you see, a human created that. The business you see, a human created that. The professional basketball player, that's a human, right? And so, yes, I understand. There's genetics, there's a little talent, there's a lot of things involved. But at the end of the day, I believe in people because of what people have done in the past. And that's why I believe in myself. And that's why I believe in all of you who are listening to this, is that you are a human. And humans have done amazing things. And for you to not think you can't do that is a total disservice to you and you're only limiting it in your mind. And so once you get on this track of self-improvement, you start seeing the momentum, you start, start seeing that snowballing effect, literally everything will change for you. And so that's what I'm trying to get people on. That's why I put out content. It's because I love talking about these things. And 16 year old me would look to people like me now for inspiration and you know, wisdom on how to do it. And again, I'm not a guru. I'm just documenting what I learned, what I'm into, and hopefully you'll, you'll relate. So that's all I got. We got a nice 25 minute one. Hope you enjoy. Make sure you subscribe or don't. Make sure you like or don't. It's all good. I put out this content to help you. If you find it beneficial, I'm glad.
take care.